Oh, hey. All right. So today uh, we're going to look at when you first buy a Pentax camera, how do you go about setting up? Um, some of the settings are going to be things that I use personally. Uh, some of it is up to your own flavor of how you want to do it. I'm going to explain the menu system and let's just dive right into it. All right. So first things first, obviously you want to turn on the camera. So just this switch right here, turn it on. And you're presented with the menu. Now, going through the menu. So the first thing is custom image, uh, which you can leave at the default. It actually is really good for color rendering. And you'll notice that as I move these across, if you look right here, it'll show you the spread of uh, red, yellow, green, cyan, blue, and magenta landscape, vibrant, and then there's radiant, which is the very extreme of saturation for the colors. And each one of these is completely customizable as well. Uh, you can also, well, these two, there is no, uh, well, obviously black and white, so you don't have to worry about the color. And vibrant, or, uh, sorry, cross-processing, uh, that one, you adjust everything yourself, so just go in here and there's a whole bunch of different presets uh, random and then you're, you can create your own flavor with your own favorites anyway uh, actually let me go back in here because I want to change that back to the random okay and uh, the FX button which is actually on the side uh, on the side here, raw effects. That would be the button that you press in order to make uh, the adjustments as illustrated in the menu. So, going on now, so digital filter, I leave it off. Um, the camera ends up having to process each individual image in regarding to uh, the different filters. So let's see, you've got extract color, toy camera, retro, high contrast, shading, invert color, uh, different colors. We'll, we'll get into that in another video. Your high dynamic range, uh, your image settings. So if you want the highest quality, if you're shooting JPEG, then you would choose 16 megapixel in the three star JPEG color space. Leave it as sRGB. The other option is Adobe RGB. Uh, most monitors do not do Adobe RGB, so you want to leave that as sRGB. And uh, in here you can also shoot in RAW. Um, that's pretty much it. Then you have your different megapixels, so 16, 12, 8, 5. My wife uses this camera, so. And then your auto exposure metering, that's uh, average, center, and spot metering. And second section, so your autofocus settings, AFA, which the camera will automatically try to figure out if it should be in single autofocus or continuous. I usually just choose it myself. Uh, I always have the expanded autofocus area on, and you can choose auto 11, auto 5, which I suggest you do not do because the camera doesn't know specifically what you're trying to take a picture of, so it may focus on the wrong area by accident. Um, I usually have it on the maximum expanded autofocus area or you can have single autofocus. Uh, basically this just helps with the tracking. So if you're using continuous autofocus, it'll automatically uh, pick up the next autofocus area as whatever it is you're shooting moves out of the current selected autofocus area. It'll pick it up right beside it. And uh, lens correction, if distortion correction, I leave it off because the software that I use, DxO, automatically corrects for it anyways and it's less processing for the camera to have to deal with so you can shoot more uh, lateral chromatic aberration I leave that on and then you've got multi exposure interval shooting dynamic range settings I leave those both on auto for shadows and highlights but what I really wanted to get into <coughs> excuse me is uh, we're getting there soon um, so 
Noise auto high ISO noise reduction. I leave it on auto. The camera actually does a very good job in regards to eliminating noise at high ISO. Uh, composition adjustment. I leave. Well, I, I don't actually use it. Um, I do my own composition uh, with slight crops after the fact. Uh, however, the camera does have the ability for you to be able to change what you've shot and using the sensor you can move the image around. Um, it's actually pretty cool. And uh, the electronic level display, yeah, you can leave that on. Uh, what that basically does is it shows you a level inside so you know whether or not uh, your horizons are straight. Uh, shake reduction, leave on. Uh, automatic horizon correction. I leave that off because sometimes uh, just for composition effect you want to be able to actually have a slight angle uh, the instead of having the camera correct it for you. Uh, so you've got your live view menu set up, contrast autofocus, autofocus auto zoom. Uh, you can leave that on. That's focus peaking. Um, and when you're Basically, in live view, when you're focusing, it'll zoom in on the image so you can actually see more clearly what's in focus and what's not. Uh, grid overlay. I usually have that on this one. Um, so you can see your angles and uh, you have the actual rule of thirds imprinted on there as well. Uh, histogram display. I don't really worry about that. Bright and dark areas. I don't usually worry about that, but again, that's up to you. Um, now the, bus, the button customization, we'll, we'll get into all those at another time. Uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. And whatever settings you've, you've, uh, you're currently using, you can actually set it up as a custom uh, user setting and then you can also name it whatever you want. Now, and that's for a uh, movie. You've got your exposure settings, you can change it from full manual, full, sorry, full manual where you control the shutter and the aperture, uh, just, the sh just the aperture. <coughs> AV is aperture value, or just leave it on uh, the camera figuring it out for you. Uh, just leave it on program. I usually like to have full control of everything I'm doing. I leave it on 24 frame per second, full HD. Uh, yeah, mid microphone, so it's not, you know, it doesn't pick up too much extra extraneous noises. Um, I leave the shake reduction off and uh well not shooting interval movie right now and i always put quick zoom to eight because that is actually 100 percent so after you've taken an image if you want to make sure it actually isn't focused then you would want to use times eight um whoops i keep going out okay so language will be english and date adjustment uh, text size standard sound effects you can turn those off as well if you want LCD display you can change uh, different colors and it's entirely up to you just leave it like that display settings you can change the contrast brightness saturation everything um, anyway all right so in here uh, what you want, what's the interface options? Okay, that's the video out. So obviously if you're in Europe, you'll use PAL. In North America, we use NTSC. Uh, USB connection, you can leave it as MSC. Uh, you can change the way the folders are named. Uh, you can create a new folder within the SD card. Uh, you can change how the file name is put onto the SD card as well. Uh, and copyright information, I always turn on and you want to embed the copyright data so that every photo you take will actually have your information so this would be me and now what took me a while to figure out was where is space because there's nothing in here in regards to space space is this little icon right here which you can see between kobe and mercury um, that is actually the space button I didn't know that, and it took me a while to figure out exactly what on earth is going on. Why can I not put a space in here? So, that's pretty much uh, that for the copyright info, which I think is important. And then, uh, this uh, specific Pentax camera uses AA batteries or DLI 190, 
uh, battery. So for the AA battery type, you can just have the camera figure out if it's a nickel metal hydride or uh, lithium or AA alkaline. Um, and you can change how long the camera stays on for before it shuts off. And let's go to the next one. So pixel mapping, the camera will actually check the sensor and correct defective pixels by binding neighboring pixels. You have your dust removal, your sensor cleaning, where it'll flip the mirror up and you can clean the sensor yourself. Uh, you can format the SD card and uh, you have your firmware options there as well. Now, I am running a K30 with K50 firmware. <coughs> if you join Pentax forums, uh, there is a whole thing on there about doing that. Now, these are the custom settings. Uh, so we have the EV steps. I have it as one third EV step so that I have more control instead of going from 100, like uh, ISO 100 to 200 to 400 to 800. I have it set so I can do 100, 125, 200, etc. Um, just so I have more actual control. Uh, the sensitivity steps, I have them as uh, equivalent to one exposure value step. Uh, see the metering so I have it set to 10 seconds so once you have the shutter locked for those 10 seconds it'll uh, keep the metering active in case anything changes before you actually do take the picture uh, auto exposure locked with uh, autofocus I have that as yes so it is on default is off everything that you see in green is what the defaults are uh, let's see, so link exposure and focus point, I have that on because I want to make sure that where I'm focused is where the exposure will be biased to. Uh, and then I have my bracketing order. Uh, this is for, well, not necessarily HDR, well, I guess HDR and uh, multi -expo or, uh, exposure bracketing. Uh, so if you're not sure if it'll be if you should underexpose or leave it as it is or overexpose by one or if you want to combine all of them to have a more dynamic range in the photo and you can just change the order uh, so this one would be zero then minus one then plus one I leave it just it's easier for me uh, minus one zero one plus one uh, but that's entirely up to you and then one push bracketing I have this set up so that way you press the shutter release once and it'll actually shoot uh, the number of bracketed shots that you want. So, let's see. Next is uh, bulb mode. So I have it set up so that you start by pressing the shutter button once and the camera will continuously take one photo until you press the button again. In the default, uh, you have to press and hold the shutter release button until, well, you press the button for however long you want to take the picture and then you release the button. I don't use that because if you're not using a cable release or uh, well yeah pretty much if you're not using a cable release then you'll have to touch the camera and that will show up in the photo because the camera hasn't been completely still. Uh, white balance when using flash I have that set to flash instead of using the auto white balance. Auto white balance under tungsten light, I have that set as uh, subtle correction because uh, I still do want some of the warm tones from uh, tungsten light. Uh, color temperature steps, I have it as Kelvin. Uh, in other words, uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the K. Uh, so you have like 4300K, 6000K, those are Kelvins. Um, now the autofocus S settings, so single autofocus. So I have a set as focus priority so that the camera will not take the picture until the subject is actually in focus. I have that set the same with continuous focus as well. Um, and autofocus when using a remote. So if you're using a wireless remote, default is off so the camera will not autofocus before taking the picture. I have this turned on so that the camera will autofocus when you're using a remote. And uh, superimpose autofocus area, that's when you look in the viewfinder and you see the little red dots. Uh, I turn that on, that's the default. Uh, shutter release while charging the flash, I have that actually set to on. Um, just because sometimes you either, take the, you either take the shot or you miss it forever. So I'd rather have the option to be able to shoot 
at any time. Uh, flash and wireless mode, I have that set as a master. Uh, Pentax uh, remote flash or off-camera flash system is all done through optical, um, where it uses the camera's built-in flash to fire off-camera Pentax branded flashes. Uh, save rotation info, that's if you're shooting portrait versus landscape. Um, so if you're shooting this way, it'll actually save the information um, when you go to review the photo on the computer. So that way it knows to actually rotate it. Uh, save menu location, I have this set as yes. Uh, so whatever area in the menu you were in before when you exit the menu, and then go back in again, it'll still be in the same location where you were before. So right now we're in custom three at number 20. So let's go back in. So see, we're still in custom three. It won't actually go like literally right to where you were, but it'll remember, um, I guess, the tab that you were in. Uh, catch and focus is a Pentax thing where you can manually uh, pre-focus and then once the subject reaches the focus point and it's in focus, the camera will automatically take a photo. Uh, that only works if you're in AFC. You're using a manual focus lens, but the camera itself is in autofocus. Uh, again, on Pentax forums, there is a whole tutorial on how to use that. Uh, now, every Pentax camera has autofocus fine adjustment where you can actually adjust the focus target, or sorry, the target focus on each lens that you connect to the camera. So with that said, uh, let's move on to the next one. And uh, because Pentax cameras are compatible with every lens that they've ever made, dating all the way back to, oh man, I don't even know, 70s, 60s, 50s probably, uh, every single one of those lenses works on a Pentax digital camera. Now, a lot of them had uh, aperture rings on them. So some of them are not, uh, they don't have an auto aperture. You have to twist the ring to tell the lens what aperture you want. Now, it's good to enable this so that way you can actually use the digital camera on those old non-automatic aperture lenses. Um, so you can still actually take a picture because a lot of people attach them they don't go into this menu and then they wonder why the camera won't actually take a photo it's because you don't actually have it set up to understand what's happening with the lens that you have attached so with that said um, that's pretty much it really uh, just go into the menus and uh, on the next video what I'll do is I'll go in more detail in regards to the custom settings for the image uh, which is the custom image area and uh, I'll take some pictures and walk you through what all these different things do uh, and if you actually notice here the FX check you can take a photo it won't save it to the memory card uh, it'll stay in the buffer and then you can actually just play around with these and you can see for yourself exactly what differences they make and then uh, you can basically fine-tune it to your own taste. Well, that's the Pentax menu system. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next video.